In this video, I'm going to rebuild the combination lock to kind of show you how to create this. I know we looked over the logic and we sent you guys the links to the builder blocks. So still definitely use those. For anyone still confused, I'm going to rebuild this step by step. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the piston door. To do that, I need pistons, sticky pistons specifically. I need some sort of block, um, nothing particular here. Um, pick what you think would look cool. Then we need repeaters. I want to take a torch because I'll need that soon. Repeater and redstone dust. So first, we'll put two sticky pistons. Two rows of sticky pistons like this. Then I can place two like this. Next, I want to do the same over here. That's too close. One more. Okay. So I'm going to put another four facing in. Make sure these ones are facing towards you. Okay, so on each side we have a total of six sticky pistons in this type of shape. On the top, we're going to just put some blocks. And again, doesn't really matter what kinds of blocks. Then I'm going to put a repeater. There's Connor. <laughs> Let me see if I can find where I was. Um, you know, normally I would cut that and restart, but that's pretty funny. So I think I'm going to leave that in this video. Now, where was I? <laughs> uh, There we are. Future reference, let me just take a quick sample of what kind of block this is. Cayenne. Okay. So now, back to the example. I don't think Connor even knows he's going to be in the video now, but it's pretty funny. Okay, so another repeater. Uh, make sure that you put one, two, three ticks. One, two, three ticks. Then we're going to put blocks on each side here. And when this activates, uh, we also need to put redstone dust down. But when it activates, it's going to push forwards these blocks here. And they're going to kind of go in and then out. So on the back side, I'm just going to add another two. And if I just activate this, you'll see it pushes forwards, right? If I break this and the input's off, it closed, um, opens. So the problem with this is we want to make sure that this stays shut, right, until someone gets something right. So the first logical thing we need, um, it's going to be an inverter. So I'm building a little staircase down. And one other thing I want to show you guys, um, in Minecraft, there's weak and there's strong charge. Like if I light this up from here, you'll see over here begins to get weaker. So I don't know, um, this version of Minecraft didn't happen on 1.11.2. We actually need to um, place an extra repeater just to strengthen the signal. It's funny that uh, Connor is asking that because the answer is yes, man. You're going to have this video shortly.
All right, so with this, we're going to put an inverter. Now it stays closed until we activate it. So, yeah, he sees. <laughs> um, if this goes false, right, it opens. So this side is the opposite. Um, so if I go here and I put a lever in, and I flip this, it opens. When I shut the lever off, it closes because this inverts the signal and makes it opposite. So now what we need to do is we need to have some input. So I'm going to pause that part. And over here, I'm going to create a few levers. Let's go I'm a little close that way. OK, so we're going to add some levers. Now this is a combination lock, not a um, flip all switches on lock. So at least one of these, you're going to need an inverter so you can trick people. Then I'm going to connect these forwards. These are going to go into AND gates. And we know inside of an AND gate, we need two inputs to be on for it to work. Now over here, this one's going to be the tricky one, right? Because we have the inverter. So this is also going to be an AND gate. But now, how do we combine these, right? If we connect them on the end, it means half the inputs doesn't matter. So the way to get around this is we're going to build a third AND gate and combine this. Oops, not the middle. So what we want to do is connect that output and this output via an AND gate. Now when we flip this switch down, because that's not the inverter, so we turn this single switch. Oh wait, this one's actually good. The other ones have to go down to, to activate. On, on, on. And that one's effectively off here, but the inverter makes it on. That activates over here. And then we can combine this into our piston door. Now you see it's getting weaker, weaker, weaker but then it dies out, right? So I think it can only go 14, so you can reactivate. So now um, you simply just, yep. Um, oh, Connor. <laughs> okay, so if we have the input wrong, oh, pressure plate, I see what he said. Yeah, that doesn't necessarily help in the example. All right, so now if we get the input right, it opens. If we get it wrong, all right, so this one, okay, that's active, 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 active. Okay, so now if we flip anything, it should close. So you see we need an on and an on. That activates these two inputs. When they're both on, the output goes on. That goes into this input of this AND gate. If we follow it back this way, we have two inputs. This on goes into this AND gate, but this on goes into an inverter and shuts off. So that's why we need to flip this switch in a different direction, thus making it a combination you need to have right. And then after that, it goes up here. Again, this might not be necessary on 1.16. I don't know. Um, I just know that weak and strong charge can affect stuff. So why not just strengthen it right before the input anyways, just to avoid any issues. Um, and voila, there you have it. So that example we showed, um, I know you guys most likely get the logic part of it, but there's the complete build part of it, start to finish with our special guest.
All right, and I think that's um, going to end my screen recording for this. And um, oh, and as you know, uh, Connor, uh, no pressure plate here, else the combination doesn't work. All right, bye guys.